No limit to the power of God. There's nothing in this nation that can stop the one that's in you. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? You, you can see this. You can see this through this ministry. And the way that you've gone forth in the years that you've been in existence. I'm telling you, everything in this nation was against you. There was no way from the natural standpoint that you could have a type of ministry like this. Somebody had to stand up for Jesus and say, we are not going to be moved by all the opposition that comes against us that tells us we can't do it, we can't do it, we can't do it. God was in that man. God was in you and said, we can, hallelujah. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Boom. When the world says you can't and God says you can, which is bigger? When the governing system of the world says you can and the governing system of heaven says you can, which is bigger? When the doctor says there's no hope for you and the Word of God says by His stripes you've been healed, which is bigger? When all the things that have happened in your life say you can't forgive, you can't forgive, there's no way you can forgive that person and the love of God is imparted into your heart by the Holy Ghost that says you can because God forgave you of a big debt which is bigger. When the emotions say, oh, it's a tough day and, you know, grandma such and such was depressed and great grandma such and such was depressed and this is just something that runs through your family and so you're depressed and going to be depressed and your kids are going to be depressed and the Word of God says that God's joy is on the inside of you and it's your strength which is bigger. Joy. When, when, you know, all the circumstances say you can't get free from this habit, you can't get free from this sinful action in your life, there's no way you can get free. And the Bible says that you've been made the righteousness of God in Christ, which is bigger. The power of righteousness. All of this in the kingdom. Now that's a treasure. Isn't that true? When the world says the economy is going to go down and it's going to get worse and people are going to get poorer and poorer and, and the Bible says that He supplies all of our need according to His riches and glory. Where's the glory? It's in you. Which is bigger. Now you have a choice. You can live by your intellect and it will always take you to this realm of limitations. And you'll live, if you only live by your intellect, not that we do not get an education, not that we don't go to school, you know, you don't drive your car with your spirit. And we don't get so spiritually minded, we're no earthly good. You understand what I'm saying, but at the same time, we're not so earthly minded, we're no spiritual good. It's a combination of both working together and realizing that when we come to the limits of where we're at in our intellect, God is always bigger if the situation is contrary to His will in your life. Isn't that awesome? I mean, there's no case. There's, there's absolutely no case of someone that, that comes forth Maybe this morning or in, in, in another service, there's never a situation where it's not the will of God for a sick person to be healed. It doesn't matter how sick they are. It doesn't matter what kind of reports that they've had from the doctor. It doesn't matter what it looks like with my eyes, what it looks like. You know, when I see it, the Word of God says that through Jesus, that person has been healed. And to get that person healed, I have to look beyond my intellect. I have to look beyond the limitations. I have to look beyond the doctor's report. We had a situation in Germany. This is all medically documented. 
was a woman that had a tumor on the inside of her that was eight centimeters. And because of this tumor that was on the inside, and I have the color photos of the tumor, I have the color photos of what was on the inside of her, the doctors went and did a complete hysterectomy. They took the tumor out and they took all of her female reproductive organs out, the ones that they do when they do a hysterectomy. Now, would you agree with me that according to the intellect, this woman could never have children again? How many of you would agree with me on that? If those things are not in the body, you can't have kids. But this is a young couple. A young married couple. And as a young married couple, normally young married couples want to have children. Isn't that true? Not all, but normally most of them do. Well, God didn't put that tumor in there. And it wasn't the will of God that she had that tumor on the inside of her. God doesn't make our bodies and then fill us full of tumors and sickness. There's not one place in the Word of God where Jesus ever put sickness into anybody. He always got the sick healed. He never went around getting those healed sick. Isn't that true? Do you know what happened to that woman? A miracle. She's got new organs. It's all documented. And she's got two babies. Two babies. Isn't that awesome? No organs. They were taken out. Hysterectomy. According to the realm of the intellect, no chance for this woman to have a baby. Never again. It's done. It's over with. If you're going to have children, you're going to have to adopt. Period. That's the way it is. And adoption is good too. And thank God you're doing that through this ministry. That's wonderful. All the different things. You know what I see through this ministry? Love, 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 love. I'm so inspired. And you all are a part of that. And I get to be a part of it. Hallelujah. <laughs> the intellect says no chance, no way. But what does the Word of God say? The Word of God says the fruit of our body is blessed. And God put new organs in that woman. And it was such a testimony that literally the doctors... This went through the hospitals and different hospitals in Germany and doctors were sending people to the healing services. Isn't that powerful? Because they realized that there's something beyond their intellect. And where did that come from? It came from what's in us through Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit to take us beyond this realm. Hallelujah. It's in the treasure box. Look at your neighbor and say, you got powerful things in you in the treasure box. Look at your neighbor and say, you got miracles in you in the treasure box. You got joy in the treasure box. You got love in the treasure box. You got power in the treasure box. You got authority over the devil in the treasure box. You're a son of God in the treasure box. It's all in you. You have this treasure here in you, in the spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody do something. Oh. Mm. Hallelujah. How do we open the treasure? How does it get open? How does this box open up? How does this well, Jesus called the treasure box, a well of water in us of eternal life that would spring up and it would produce everlasting life? 
In John 4, Jesus talked about in John the 7th chapter, out of you, out of your belly, shall flow rivers of living water. Where is the rivers of living water? It's in you through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And there are gifts of the Holy Spirit that are in you that want to flow out of you. There are fruits of the Spirit in you that, that are to be brought up. It's in you. It's in the treasure box. You're different than the people of the world. You're different than man that lived for 4,000 years in the Old Testament that didn't have God on the inside of him. You're different. You and I got a different system. We have a different way of living. We're not under the system of this world. Praise God. We have the kingdom of God in us. That's our system. That's our life. That's what we live by. We're in the world, but we're not of it. Hallelujah. Hello, kings. Look at your neighbor again and say, hello, king. Well, you can say, hello, queens, too. We got any queens in here today? <laughs> mystery. What is the mystery? We're going to find out in the next message what that word mystery means. And we're going to find out how there's a couple of things that the Word of God tells us that we can do that will reveal the mystery. And as the mystery is revealed, the treasure box opens up. And more and more of who God is in you flows out. And this is what changes the world. The more aware that you are of who you are in Him, and He is in you, the more aware of, of what is in you in the Spirit, that the faith and the joy and all these things are in you to flow out. There's something that God has given us to bring what's on the inside out. And this is what will change a whole nation. This is what brings revival. This is what brings the outpouring of the Spirit of God. How many of you want to see uh, more and more of what is here multiply? And how many of you know God is here? He's here. He's not coming. He's here. He's in you. Amen? Father, I thank You so much. For that that you've said today. I thank you so much for that that you've done today. I thank you for your anointing that is here. I thank you for your word that you brought forth today. I thank you for this wonderful, wonderful family. This church family, Father, that is here, that is full of your love, Father. To, and full of, of the motivation behind that love to bring in the lost. To bring in the harvest. To bring people to Jesus. To meet the mans of... of, of uh, to, to, meet the needs of mankind in this earth today. I thank you, Father, for love that is manifesting here to brothers and sisters in the Lord and to those that don't know you yet. And Father, I just pray with them. And I believe, Father, for, for increased revival in Malaysia, increased revival in Asia, increased revival in other places as they go forth. We don't see little, we see big. You're doing big things today in this earth, Father. We don't see little. We're not selfish with this, Father. We have your nature in us, which is love, and that's to reach out and to reach out and to reach out, Father, and to love this world the way that you want to love this world with what's on the inside of us. And we thank you, Father, for it. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Now with every head bowed and eyes closed, I don't know today that everyone here is born again. I don't know today that everybody here is going to go to heaven. But I'll tell you something. I'm going to give you an opportunity and this is the greatest thing that I could bring you today. And that's an opportunity to know God as your Father. An opportunity to get God's kingdom in you and for your whole life from the inside out to change. God loves you and that's why He created you. He wanted you to be the one that received His love. 
And you can't find this love in another relationship with another person. You can't find this love by having another job, by having success in this life. You can't find it that way. You've got a void on the inside of you that has not been filled because you're a spirit being. And as a spirit being, until we find God as our Father, and until we find His nature on the inside of us, until that sin that we have in us is removed... There is no satisfaction. There's a void. There's a void. There's a void. Hell is the future for those that do not receive Jesus. God didn't want it to be that way. That's why He sent Jesus and that's why He gave His life. And God loves you. And because He loves you, He wants to be your Father today. He wants to be in personal relationship with you today. He wants to put Himself in you. And give you a wonderful brand new life. How many of you know that's the best? Would you agree with me? Those of you that know what I'm talking about, would you agree with me? This is the best. This is better than healing, better than miracles, better than walking on the water. This is the best. Amen? So if you're here today and you do not know for sure that you're going to go to heaven if you were to die tonight or Jesus were to come today, Lift your hand right now if you don't know for sure. Anybody in the building? Hallelujah. All right, one.